The MQTT committee is completely fucking useless. They haven't done anything of substance since 2019, and they're a pay-to-play organization. The Sparkplug crew, crew is not receptive to outside suggestions. I was on their Slack channel, and I made a bunch of very constructive suggestions, both for simple tweaks and evolutionary changes, and I just got ignored. Both are very flawed at present, but easily fixed. I tried, repeatedly, with very specific criticisms along with solutions and recommendations. Fuck them both. All right. Now, again, that's not my opinion, okay? It's not what I believe, but I understand why he believes this, okay? I understand why he believes this. Now, for all of you guys who say that I'm always sucking on the MQTT teat and the and the in, inductive automation teat and the in the spark plug working group teat, I am not. I assure you, I give people the bad fucking news. If I think they're wrong, I tell them they're wrong. I got enemies everywhere, far and wide. <laughs> all right, so here's his working list, and I want to go over this this um, I'm a, how OPC UA and MQTT prevent interoperability, and I want to give an announcement on an upcoming paper that I think everyone should read. Okay, because I've had a chance to peer review it. I think it's exceptionally done. I think it could be groundbreaking. And I think it could be a paper that really lays out the argument and creates the, the groundswell that would that could push um, interoperability standards in the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna read that next. So here, this guy who obviously is pissed off at the MQTT committee and the Sparkplug group. He has a list of core MQTT issues. So remember, the Sparkplug working group, that's managed by the Eclipse Foundation, and that is the standard for industrial data, basically. Okay, The MQTT committee is the one who is responsible for just the MQTT um, specification. Most of us are familiar with MQTT 3.1.1, which was a really, really stripped down specification for this broker technology. Okay. MQTT 5, the Sparkplug B specification, sort of fits in between MQTT 3 and MQTT 5. It, the Sparkplug B specification was designed to close some of the gaps that were in MQTT 3 that needed to be closed for industrial data. And then, the, and then when MQTT 5 came out, it adopted some of the things from the Sparkplug specification that closed the gap. So you got to understand there's two different bodies working here, okay? So from the core MQTT groups here, the core MQTT issues, he lays out here. A, the decision to use four bits for message type. That's a problem, okay? It's short-sighted, and now it's a major limitation. Do I agree or disagree? I disagree with this, okay? Uh, I agree why I understand why he believes that that's short. It's a major limitation. I do believe it was short sighted. Number two, multi publish is essential. So publish more than one topic in a single message. I agree with this one. I understand why the standard is written that you're you're essentially publishing one topic in a single message. The way we get around it is we parse all the messages as the payload and then we parse them on the client side. But yes, I understand what he's getting at here. Topics should have durable metadata. I disagree here. Um, they could be passed as headers in the publish or as its own message type. I am much better. I, 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 I am much more comfortable publishing metadata as a function of the hierarchy. So metadata as a sibling or a, or a child of a message. Okay. Um, but. He, he believes that it should have durable metadata. That's that's really moving towards the OPC um, information model structure. Payloads should have a data type, so a MIME type, to enable parsing, processing by subscribers or intermediaries. Totally agree. Um, topic binding should be a built-in broker feature like a sim link, so topic aliases are not this. I agree, 100%. The lack of a capability to query topics is a huge flaw and gap. Ideally, these queries should be able to include metadata filters as well. I agree with him wholeheartedly here. We we do workarounds on the client side. You basically using a platform that can browse a broker, and then we we basically write an engine that can do the the querying for us. But I absolutely agree with him. I think natively we should be able to query uh, topics um, from a broker directly. MQTT subscription patterns are hopelessly limiting. They should support richer match expressions and also metadata filters. He kind of touches on this above. Yeah, I'm 50% in there. 
Uh, MQTT should officially support a REST binding for request, response, query, publish, read, subscribe, unsubscribe. Okay, I want to say this. It should, it should, it should support some type of um, web service um, mechanism. Um, I the uh, my disagreement here would be specifically with a REST binding, but I agree in principle. Handling of large payloads, e.g., file loads, file, video content, firmware, software updates, method responses needs a lot of work to improve uh, reliability. I agree. And specifically, what I'd like to be able to do is partner multiple topics together so that I could go uh, a large payload could be, let's say I'm sending a blob. I could send the first third of a blob in one message in one topic, the, the second third in another message, another topic like that. I'd, I'd love to be able to do that type of thing. And then handling of RPC method invocations remains an awful hack. This must be addressed. All right, core spark plug issues. The rigid node device format does not fit real world models. Do away with one of them and allow more flexible topic hierarchies. I agree. Here's what I think you need to be able to do. You need to be able to parse slashes in the node device definitions. Um, also, at some point, we have to get to instr instrumentation. Right now, the issue is, is that device is device is device. We can never define whether a device is a PLC or a device is an instrument underneath a PLC. And I think we need to be able to do both. We agree with them 100%. Handling of the birth messages and the intermingling of data and metadata in them as a poor design. I agree with this one big time. That I, I, I feel like it was loosely defined when they wrote Sparkplug B here as it relates to birth. The process for requesting birth messages is terribly inefficient. Metadata should be retained, not requested each time by each client. Totally agree. Should there be, um, there should be metadata messages to deal with metadata. Mm, I'm 50-50 on this one. The opaque multi-value nature of data messages makes it impossible for clients to subscribe to individual metrics. Huge issues. Again, I agree here, but you have to understand that it, 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 because Sparkplug B is device centric, this feels comfortable the, the, or this feels like a natural um, evolution of that. So if you, if you, if we solve spark plug B with it being device centric, then I think it takes care of this, this multi-value nature of the data message. So, um, and for those of you who have, who haven't browsed like a raw M, uh, spark plug B namespace, um, you would, you know, I recommend you do it and you'll understand exactly what we're saying here. The primary client stuff is unnecessary and should be removed. I agree. It's, it's extraneous, not necessary. Any device commands methods should be fully declared. The naming of metrics and commands needs to be locked down to a more restricted character set. I disagree. Uh, add a few more top level data types. So location, blob with mind type. I agree. Support other encodings besides protobuf, plain JSON, zip JSON, BSON. Agreed. Totally agree. And millisecond resolution for timestamps is inadequate for modern systems where accurate event sequencing is critical. He's obviously arguing we should go to microseconds. And I do agree. So great. I agree with all those comments. And, and, and let me say this, or I don't agree with all of them. Everything in there is valid, but I think that there's a cost benefit analysis that's going on when you're writing these specs where some of the, where, where the result is some of these things.